My name's Bonnie Lightfoot. I live at Overend Farm and I live here with my husband Tim and Jake, my son. We've got a, a suckler herd of pedigree Charlie and produce good quality meat for our suppliers. We've got a good relationship with Farm Net Zero. They are really instrumental in helping us uh, reduce our carbon footprint. Not only that, they're helping us look at different ways to produce fodder for our cattle so that we can cut down our emissions. We do a silage mix, which we do a lot of red clover, which is a good quality feed for our cattle. We are looking at putting herbal lays, and these will be put in along our stream fields. So that will help slow the water going into the river. Tree planting, that's helping the water go down into the soils. Where our lowland is with all the rushes, we're actually going to put leaky dams in to slow the water, which is really instrumental for our neighbours further downstream who get flooded out. That's one of the things that we wanted is to ensure that their lives are better through some of our actions. A few years back, one of our friends and neighbours got flooded out. So we decided that we would hold a flood forum we got together, arranged for a company to come up from Bodmin to show the villagers on how to protect their own homes, protecting their land with barriers and gates. And the next stage of that uh, project would be to actually um, ask the farmer to help. We have grown that community by forming our climate change action group. Two weekends ago we held an event here and had all our villagers down. We had 60 people here. You know, in the past the farming community was part of the community because they had a lot of workers, but now we haven't got a lot yeah. of workers on farm. So to try and reconnect, we have to bring the community into us. It was probably a learning curve for myself because I didn't know what was going on with the farming. Um, but you guys did portray yourselves really well and you were positive about your farming actions, which I think came across really nicely. It was helpful to get the community involved at that point and bring everyone together a bit. I think the best thing about working with the local community and the farmers is working together as a team, learning together as a team. We are pleased that all these um, farms can get on board. If I haven't got very many coming, I'll ring them all up personally and I'll say, hey, you've got to come. It's really important. So they all turn up, which I'm really proud of them. In our community, our farming community and wider community, we aim to deliver a healthy environment for our community. We all start somewhere in our parish. doesn't matter how small it is we can achieve something. I'm Amelia Lake. This is a real food garden. We are primarily a market garden. We produce veg for our veg box scheme and our farm shop. We also integrate livestock into our system so that it works holistically. So we do pork, hogget and beef direct. Our mission statement is to nourish people in place. So we want to provide really good nutrient dense food, but we also want to improve the place in which we work. I think farmers are in a unique position to help us meet net zero because the very work that we do, it can be an emitter of carbon, but it's probably one of the only industries that can also lock carbon, sequester carbon. And we've demonstrated that in the past five years worth of soil data we've found that we've got more carbon in our soils year on year and that it's the management that makes the big difference. So managing them in a no dig way, keeping plant roots active for as much of the year as possible, just putting those sugars down into the soil, locking that carbon down there. That is really helping us to capture carbon and store that organic matter, help the soil food web thrive. I've loved being part of Farm Net Zero. There's so much learning to be had from other farmers and practitioners, but also from the Farm Net Zero team. There's such a wealth of knowledge and we're 
new entrants were passionate about regenerative agriculture and through Farm Net Zero we've found some of those other people who might have been farming for six generations but they're sharing the same interests as us and we're on different journeys but in the same direction. Engaging with our local community has been essential and a sort of a key part of our business from the beginning. We sell our veg boxes through our farm shop here on site, through local towns as well, within sort of a 15 mile radius. We also do local farmers markets and we have a local delivery round. Some of our customers have been with us for seven years now and those are, are good quality relationships. Not only do we want to reduce our carbon footprint and reduce the food miles by keeping our products sold locally, but we want to make that connection between people and where their food come from. Those local loyal customers who understand what we do and why we do it are valuable to us just as our produce is valuable to them. Having direct sales allows us to have conversations essentially. It allows us to talk about what we do, why, we're quite brave with our customers. We will talk to them about climate change. We'll talk to them about environmental issues. And it gives them the opportunity to understand that their choice to be with us has greater impact than if they were to source their food from somewhere else. And we can let them know that by buying their veg directly from us and having a regular veg box, we can use that security to invest in management practices which allow us to have a much more positive impact. We've quite often said to customers that we have got ponds and areas of mixes for overwintering wild birds with their veg box money. It's their commitment to us which allows us to take those actions which have a better impact. I don't think I'd want to persist with these practices if they just stored carbon and there weren't any other benefits to the way that we work or the business but the fact is is that we hold moisture better in the droughts the water also drains through the soil better in the periods of high rain so we're improving the structure of our soil as well as locking in carbon and that's good business sense and that makes my work easier as a grower My name is Catherine Barrett. We are at Trigodon Farm. We run a beef and arable farm, about 150 cattle. We started our tenancy three years ago, and that's when we started this journey into being a lot more environmentally friendly and looking at our soils, our soil structure, um, doing our carbon footprint. I worked alongside the Farm Carbon Toolkit, trying to get our soil structures just right. I'm um, still got a little way to go yet, but they are certainly definitely changing. We've done some maize trials. We haven't done any ploughing. and We've just gone straight in with a direct drill and we've done trials against the plough so we can see what the difference is. It's been amazing to see that the soil structure has really done really well for the direct drill. After a maize harvest, we had a big downpour. We don't get the wash away because um, the soil structure is doing its job by being filtration and keeping everything still without it running off. Whereas ploughing has that other effect, you know, a big downpour of rain and it washes down the hill. The meeting today is all about how we can look after our hedgerows in a better way. We trim them in a way that helps the trees in, and the bushes in the hedges grow really well and provide food and shelter for all the wildlife. Also, there's funding out there for um, different things. So it's, it's trying to learn what's available and what's not available and what is the best things to do to be able to perhaps capture that funding. We've enjoyed a lot of the um, Farm Net Zero meetings. It's really good to meet other farmers and swap ideas. It's really nice to get off the farm and just be with other like-minded people. And it's not just talking about the farm, you can talk to them about the weather and it's just nice to have a group that you can go along and you have a cup of tea and uh, you've got group discussions and we can all listen or put our pennies worth in and it is a really nice meeting with so many different topics that they cover. It's really important to have other farmers coming to us to see what we're doing because it's not a case that we're doing it right, we could be doing it wrong 
but it's farmers can say okay don't like that idea I'm not taking that back with me but they might also say actually that could work with us I'm gonna try that somewhere I just think getting out is an important thing maybe just having a bit of a chuckle just uh, to themselves and with others just to sort of lighten their day take them away from what they've got at home just for a few hours every farm is different we can't all do the same thing but we can adapt we can make things work in different ways we're just experimenting and seeing what will work with us more in the future we'd like to hold more meetings and events to showcase what we're doing because our future in farming our future in this world we've all got to look at what we're doing to make it a better place Every environment each farm lies on has got different sort of things there they have to address. So it's, it's, been, it's been really good having these meetings. I think they're really, really important to the farming community, really important. My name is Martin Howlett. We are Deer Park Farm. Suckler Beef, Sheep and Arable Farm with the emphasis very much on conservation and sharing our story, our journey with the general public. That ranges in a variety of ways, going from the general Open Farm Sunday traditional yearly event through to inner city primary schools, very specialist school visits, right through to uh, those with learning difficulties with the local groups that operate. So there is a sense of satisfaction in the fact that we can share what we have. We are, after all, only custodians of the land in the time we're here, and we try our level best not only to be a commercial farm in terms of uh, food production and managing the countryside of the environment, but also sharing of that understanding of what farming really is. That has also been further driven by us all being part of Farm Boat Zero Group, looking at our carbon footprint, the carbon audit, and doing things differently on the farm with young adult learners. The experience they have when they come to the farm is very much hands-on. They do have the ability to be able to conduct uh, different projects and parts of our conservation work. And that's an important part, not only from the point of view of building their skills and developing their confidence, but also from our point of view, we are able to have some form of help in terms of the uh, clearing of footpaths or around our apple orchard or the pond. But I think probably what do they get most of all out of it is that sudden enjoyment of being in the countryside, the fresh air, the healthiness, uh, the, the exercise, the well-being. I'm Mark Claridge. I work for Transferable Skills Training, known as TST. We primarily deal with learners with uh, educational needs, so working on work experience, social skills, giving our learners a chance to actually gain some real experience, having some proper targets, working with a local farmer, so with Martin, he's given over some land to access off a public footpath. We cleared all that, uh, we planted some trees, and then we opened up an area which the public were actually able to access and actually sit down and uh, have a picnic break. And the biggest thing I like to think about for them is, is exposure, and they get to see what other people do. So sometimes their worlds can be quite sort of, you know, narrow. And, you know, through opportunities like this, some of our learners actually gone on to get work placements and gone into uh, continued work and full-time work apart from the sort of the social and mental health side benefits for them by being outside. I think aspirational, let them think about something else they can do rather than just being stuck in one place, learning about one thing. Farming has always had to face up the challenges of change and I think the way that agriculture evolves does always send that challenge in a bigger way than perhaps many appreciate. West Country Farms generally have had the sense of wanting to socialise and share what each other do and there's been this realisation that we should be working together better. Here in Cornwall there is that very positive can-do approach that has become part of our resilience and that leads to innovation and uh, a positive approach to farming and to uh, the whole rural economy. If we can then encourage others in other areas to do the same, it's well worth the journey. Hi, my name's Claire Brewer. We farm at Ennis Barton in Cornwall. 
We've got 450 dairy cows. We rear all of the calves and we use some of them to go back into the herd and we finish the rest for beef. The only thing that we bring in feed-wise is the concentrates for the cows and calves and some of the finishing stock. We haven't used any bag fertiliser for two or three years. We use all of our own manure. If we don't have the soils, we, we don't have crops, we don't have the cattle and we can't feed the world. And we don't know what's going to happen in the future, so we need to be making sure that we've got good soils, healthy soils. Can you imagine if they were wild animals? Today I was taking a group of children from the local school around the farm. We try and have as many school groups on the farm as possible and we think it's very important to educate not only the children but the teachers as well. Although we're in Cornwall in a very rural area, a lot of children won't know where their food comes from still. They won't have had the opportunity for big outdoor spaces. A lot of them don't know how to put welly boots on because they just haven't had those experiences. So they can have hands on with the animals, they can learn what the animals eat, what they drink, what they produce. These are really full of sugar. We'll visit the newborn calves, go into the milking parlour, they'll pretend to be cows while we take them into the parlour. We look at the nature that we see along the way and we talk about what other things live on the farm like the foxes and the badgers and microbes in the soil and worms that you can hardly see, little microorganisms. We've had thousands of children through and we've been doing it for about 25 years now. We need the youngsters to come up through. We need the bright young things to be working on farm. We've got children who come who don't fit the school curriculum and they absolutely blossom when they come. And that is just what means the world to me, that I've given them a lovely day, they've gone away, they've learnt lots, and hopefully it will give them thought for the future as well. There's so many options for jobs and employment within the county which are associated with agriculture, not necessarily directly working on the farm, but associated, and a lot of those children will be working in the food industry in the future. My favourite animal is a cow, so I always want to get one. That's my dream. I've had so much good times on this farm. I like seeing the um, older cows and how they came up to the gate and just stared at us and fighting each other. I think if you're going to have children coming to the farm, you have to love it. There's no point doing it unless you absolutely love doing it because you're then giving the wrong message. Can you imagine having nappies for all of these and having to change them all? Well, I'm hoping that we can continue to improve, make sure that we leave everything in a better state than it was when we started farming for the next generations. And I'm hopeful that Ellis Barton will continue to be a thriving farm for many generations to come. <laughs>